Hey everybody, thanks for stopping by. Let's go ahead and get started and install the Hyper 212 Black Edition from Cooler Master. You can see right down here I have a B450 Micro ATX motherboard. I got a Ryzen 5 2600 that I want to cool down. So the first thing I want to do is I just want to take off these plastic clips. And right now I'm filming outside of the case just so I can film this better. So as I get this going right here, we're going to take these clips off. And you do want to save the screws and the plastic clips in case you want to switch coolers in the future. So let me go ahead and get these off as quickly as possible. So on and so forth. All right. So now that I've got both plastic clips off, these guys right here, the back plate, that's what adheres the back plate. I'm going to pan right over here, the back plate to the motherboard. So you can see right here in this case, I do have access to the back of my motherboard, but if you take off the side of your case like this is right now, and you can't access the back plate, you're going to have to take the whole motherboard out of your case. So now that those plastic clips are off, we'll go right back over here. Depending on your motherboard, this thing is just going to fall off. So when you're, if you're doing this inside your case, prepare for this to fall off unless it somehow adhered to your motherboard. So now that we got these plastic clips off, I'm just going to show you right here. I'm just going to pull up the motherboard and there's the back plate right there. It is off. So the next thing, or the first thing we're going to do, is we're going to prep the back plate for the Hyper 212. And you can see right here we have two sides. One says Intel, and if you flip it over, the other side says AMD. But to install for our AM4 socket, what we want to do is we want to have the Intel facing us. Okay, so with the, you've got your back plate here, the next step I'm coming, the next step is to grab these eight pieces. You got four pins and then you have these three, or I'm sorry, these four pl plastic clips. So let's go ahead and remember the Intel has got to be facing us. We have these eight plastic clips right here. For the AM4 socket, we want to use the short ones. So one, two, three, and four. We're going to take our pins right here and we're going to put one in each of the short ones here. Let's see if I can do it like this. And it's a little trickier than it seems. Okay, it looks like I did that. So I have all four pins in these slots. And somehow I'm going to turn it over. Maybe it's easier to do it this way. And you can see it's been a while since I've installed one of these. So you might be going through the same pains that I'm going through right now. One goes in, one comes out. Eventually we're going to get there. And we're going to slot them in just like that. So now they're all slotted in. The next thing we want to do is grab a plastic clip to secure each of these pins in place and it should go on fairly easy. One. Two. 
two, three, and then the last one, four. Okay, so now all these four pins are secured, but you can see right here, there, you can space them in one of two directions. So what we gotta do is if we're looking at these two pins right here, we want to make sure that they're farthest away from each other. So we want to click that over there, and this one is clicked over. If it was here, you want to make sure you click it over. And then the same for these two right here. I can see they're already the farthest apart. But just to double check, I'm going to do that. So now that all four pins are as far away as they can be from each other. So just like that, the back plate has been prepped. And now, we go to our motherboard and we're just gonna go through. I'm gonna turn it over just so I can show you. And then we'll turn it right back over. And you can see those four pins are coming through. All right, so the next step is to, gra to grab the four standoffs. They look like that. And we're just gonna go ahead and put these on those four pins. We're gonna hand tighten, hand tighten them at first. And when I do this, I just always use a crisscross pattern to ensure equal pressure on the back side of the motherboard. Get that started really quick. Again, I'm just gonna hand tighten them until they stop. So those are nice and tightened right now. The next thing I'm going to do, because I do want to tighten them more, is you want to grab this socket that comes included with the Hyper 212 Black Edition and the RGB Edition. I'm going to put that on the first standoff. And I'm just going to tighten it down just a little bit more, but I don't want to crush the motherboard, but just a nice, good, firm tightening. And again, I'm going to crisscross. I'm going to go to the opposite corner. Make sure it's nice and snug. And then the last corner, nice and snug. All right, so back plate stand-ups are good to go. Now let's focus our attention to prepping the heat sink. The actual thing that's going to cool down your CPU. So grab your heat sink. And then from the box you want to grab these four items. These are the brackets for the AMD install. And you want to get these two screws right there. Okay, now the goal with these two brackets is that we want to place them right here on the heat sink, okay? You can see the little notch right here. See that notch? It's going to go down right there on top of the heat sink. It doesn't go underneath like that, it won't fit. So on top, and you want to make sure that the screw screws are facing you so you can screw it down here a little in a little bit. So just like that, I'm gonna hold that with my thumb. I got my little screw here. And it helps if you have a magnetic screwdriver to kind of help you along. I'm gonna go ahead and tighten that up. Just like so. 
Again, nice and snug. I don't want to strip the screw. Turn it over and the same things. There's that notch. Again, we're going to go on top of this channel on the heat sink. I'm using my thumb to hold it. Again, it helps to have that magnetic screwdriver. Nice and snug again. Okay. So the brackets for the heat sink is prepped. Now this isn't a brand new Hyper 212. If you just buy yours, you're gonna have a plastic cover on here. You wanna make sure to peel that off. If I have some B-roll, I'll show it to you. Make sure it's nice and clean. And again, let's go over here to the CPU. You wanna make sure your CPU is nice and clean. I'll leave a link in the description on how to clean your CPU and heat sink with some isoprofil alcohol. I'll leave that in the description for you. So now that we have the back plate prepped, we have the heat sink prepped, it's time to actually install this on top of your CPU. So let me grab my thermal paste. And when you do buy brand new, it is gonna come with thermal paste. So here I have um, some Noctua thermal paste. I'm gonna go ahead and put a pea-sized drop on top of my CPU. That should be just enough. Do that. All right. And now the next thing you want to do, you want to orientate your heat sink so that when it's in your case, the cooler master is facing just like that and not upside down. So make sure you orientate it the right way. And you see these four screws here, we got to mate them with these four standoffs. So I just very carefully come down And try and put them as right on top of each other. So now I have the heat sink standing on the four standoffs. So this is where it can get a little tricky if this is the first time you're doing it. What I do is I put pretty much heavy, heavy pressure on and I want to get one corner threaded through a few ways. So with my left hand here I'm putting a lot of pressure on it just to keep it nice and steady. And then when I'm screwing right now, I'm putting a lot of pressure on that just to get it threaded a few. And I can feel it threading through right now. So this corner I know is threaded a couple times. I'm gonna to go to the opposite corner. And I'm putting a lot of pressure on top. Just to keep it stable. Okay, I can feel that the second corner has threaded through. So I, now I know it's, it's on there. I'm gonna to go to the opposite corners again. <clears throat> A few threads there because I wanna keep equal pressure and not too much pressure on one side. And I'm gonna continue this in a crisscross manner until I feel the screws bottom out. Okay, so this is the first one to bottom out. Again, I'm not gonna crush it, but it stopped. So I'm not gonna go any further on that one. Come back to this corner. Okay, it's bottomed out. It's telling me to stop. A third corner. It's bottomed out. 
it's telling me to stop and then we go to the last corner up here all right and just like that this heat sink is installed all right let's go to the fan there are two types that I've come across one is with these wires right here and then the second one is with the clips <clears throat> so first let's start with these wire clips again we want to make sure that we have our heat seek on properly and that the cooler master is readable the second we got to put this fan on here just like this okay and then if this is the first time you're doing it you might be wondering well how do I know which is the front and which is the back. Now remember, we have to push air through this heat sink. So from here to blow out here to cool up our CPU. You can see this is the front of the fan. This is the back of the fan. Okay, you can see in the back of the fan it has like, I, it's not quite an X, but it's the bracket. So X for exhaust. Let me see if I can get an, another fan here. You can see right here, this is the back of the fan. It has like this X bracket for exhaust. So that means if you're looking at these fans, it's blowing air into the camera. So to do that, we want to make sure that these brackets are facing the heat sink right here to push air through. Okay. And also when you're installing this fan, you want to put it the right way for cable management. So for in this instance, we want this wire to be down here so we can put it through the motherboard and cable manage this properly. All right, so let's go ahead and do the first wire right here. I'm just gonna thread it through these two holes here. And then on the top side here, I'm gonna put it right into that channel. See this channel right here? And now the tricky part is just to hold it with one hand while you get the other one, the other plastic one, and we're going to come back here. Whoops. Sorry, it came out. Okay, so we're good there. Okay, now, find the holes on the fan. And again, we just wanna get that clip in the channels right there. Okay, so right now that fan is installed. And if this is the type of Hyper 212 you have, the last thing you need to do is just plug in the the fan header into the CPU fan header or the CPU fan cord into the CPU fan header. And it's got a notch right there. You want to match it up with the notch on the header. And just like that, you're done with this type of install. Okay? But we're going to go ahead and take this off because our, I know there are other Hyper 212s out there that come with these fan clips. And it's just the same idea except you're using these clips. Except I can't find my fan screws. Okay, so you have the two fan clips, you're going to need those four screws. Again, you want to practice by putting the cable management here so I know I want to be in that corner. So if I do that, I know the plastic clips got to be like so. Oh my 
goodness. Screw these in. And by far, the one to clip I did buy a couple years ago. So it seems like they must have changed to the wire clips, I don't know, within the last year or so. I don't know if that was to save money or for it to be easier, but I think those wire clips that you just saw, they're kind of cheap. And I really like the plastic clips because they adhere even better to the heat sink. So you can see I got those installed and it's really easy in my opinion because they literally just snap on like that. And again, if you have this type of fan clips, you're almost done. You just want to make sure to plug in the cord into the CPU fan header. You ready to install? Put your motherboard into your case. If you found this video helpful, make sure to give it a thumbs up and please subscribe for future content. Thanks for watching, folks.